another tutorial with John Hartley. Uh, today we'll be looking at some more After Effects. So those of you that were tired of seeing those web videos pop up, you know, here's, here's your shot to get some more After Effects. And today we'll actually be taking a look at three-dimensional space and uh, the camera tool inside of After Effects. And th this is something that you can use uh, for title sequences, for, you know, slideshows, making things look pretty polished and actually starting to get some depth into your projects. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what I've done uh, just here really quickly. All right, so right there you can see that I have a camera movement. So what we're going to do is break that down. I'll take my camera out. I have my text right here and I've just used that with, with the text tool like other tutorials. So that's on the timeline now. What I have to then do is make sure that I check the three-dimensional box, and I'll show you why here in a second. And I'll turn it off for now, go up to Layer, New, Camera. Uh, I usually use 35 millimeter. There are lots of different choices, and that's gonna just change you know, the angle of view, the zoom, and all of that. So I'm not gonna mess with that at all. Uh, I guess I hit Custom. I must change one of the settings. All right, so I'll just say OK, and we have our camera. Now if you start moving the camera around, um, up here in your toolbar, I'm going to go ahead and click on the camera and use the Orbit Camera Tool. Nothing's happening because I don't have a three-dimensional layer. So I'll go ahead and undo that Orbit Camera that I just did and click on three-dimensional. And again, that's this 3D cube right here for camera moves. And now, when I use the orbit tool, you can see that I'm starting to orbit in three-dimensional space. And the text is very flat, and that's something that can't really be helped too much in After Effects in order to um, make it 3D text. You probably have to use 3ds Max or Maya or one of those other programs, even Blender. Um, so I'll go ahead and undo that camera move. And let's go ahead and hit P on the camera for position. And hit A for point of interest. These are the main two things that you have to worry about uh, with your camera. And let me go ahead and pop out to two views horizontal. Actually, two views vertical. Okay, so I was saying the wrong thing. What we want to do is go to top. Uh, I, I had been on active camera. Let's go to top and two views horizontal. So now we can see in our composition that our camera is here. This big triangle right here um, centers at the camera. This dot right here, that is the point of interest. So if we move this to the left, you can see over here on the left side that our camera has moved. And over here on the right, that proves it. So now if we change the point of interest back to here, we see that the camera turns, but it doesn't just truck over, it actually swivels. And so now we have a little three-dimensional effect going on with camera moves and it's a bit offset. So now that we can see how the camera is moving around from the top view, uh, let's go ahead and start adding some keyframes and really look through the rest of these camera tools. So I'm going to hit U and that will bring up the keyframes that I already made for point of interest and position. Uh, so let's go ahead and move forward two seconds. And now, I guess I'll just move the camera over this way. And notice how I, I can move it and the point of interest stays the same. It's because we added a keyframe and so now it's always gonna stick right there. All right, so we have our first animated camera move right there. One thing that I want to point out before we get any farther is, whoop, let's go back. All right, when I come over to this side, watch as I make this pass right here. 
When I get right here, you can see that the text is as flat as possible. Again, it's not three-dimensional text. It's just in 3D space. So that's something to keep in mind. I know I have the bevel emboss on, so it looks like it's punched out a little bit, but really it's uh, about zero pixels thick. Okay, so we'll pop back out here and now go ahead and click and hold on the camera tool. And we have unified camera tool and that kind of just turns into, I honestly, I haven't ever figured out what the unified camera tool does. Um, so usually I jump straight to the orbit camera tool and that allows you to kind of just swing around and ah, crazy. And you can see everything that's going on over on your, your right side in the top view. And that's why I like to have the top view up. So now all of this motion is being um, tracked by just this keyframe. So no matter where I go with this, I'm only moving the position of the camera. And so the position keyframe is changing as well. Take a look down here as I start to move the camera around. You can see the numbers for position are in fact changing. Okay, so we hop back up here and now we see the track X and Y camera tool. Now this is if you only wanna move around on the X axis or the Y axis. So this is helpful for tracking shots. And let's go ahead. Uh, one, one thing to notice with that um, is the point of interest stays with you. So this is definitely a, a truck shot. Your entire camera is trucking to the right. And so now once I get there, I hit V to bring on my regular pointer. I click on the point of interest and I can pop it back over to the center. I'll go ahead and hit C to pull up my camera tool again. And you can actually cycle through just by pressing C. You see how uh, my icon is changing here. So that's the X and Y tracking tool. It's the tracking X and Y tool. Uh, that is the tracking Z tool. And this will, oh, sorry, I middle scrolled in there. This will allow you to zoom in and zoom out on the X or the Z axis. So we get all the way up in there. And let's move forward, use the tracking Z axis to back out again. And we can see this nice Bezier curve over here. And this shows exactly what's going on. So you can already see the, the benefit of having this two view and showing from the top. That way you can see exactly what your camera's doing and you're not confused as to where you may be. Uh, if you add a solid on the bottom, you can probably keep track of it that way as well uh, with just one view, but I, I prefer to have this second view up as well. And again, we have the orbit camera tool that we already discussed and there we go. We'll just pop it up there. So we have camera moves and our camera moves in and moves out. There are a lot of cool things you can do with the camera and three dimensional space. Uh, more than I have time to, to do in this tutorial. But what I will show you is one of probably the coolest effects uh, that you can do in After Effects. And this comes stock with the After Effects package, so you can do it uh, as, as well as me. So go ahead and what I did there was layer, new, solid. I just made it the same settings as my composition. And note that when I click on something else, um, the camera shuts off on that top view, but it's still there. Uh, it's just not showing that big triangle that shows the the field of view. So I click on this black solid and then it affects some presets. Let's start putting in particle. Let's take CC particle world, drag it onto the black solid layer. And okay, what just happened? What just happened was CC particle world is now on and it starts running at zero seconds. So if we scroll all the way back on our timeline to zero, uh, nothing shows up yet. But because we were at three seconds, it's already part way through um, starting to use those particles. So we'll hop back down to zero seconds and switch back to one view. And let's go to active camera. And I'll bump this up so I can see it better. Switch to fit up to 100%. And so now our particle 
is ready to begin. If I just kind of start going, you can see that the particles, I'm going to turn the camera off for a second, and this will keep it just straight forward. All right, so our particles start and they get going. What I want to do is go to physics, change my animation to, let's go fire, uh, velocity, bring that down, bring gravity down to 0 0.05. And so now if we go forward, we can see that it's starting to uh, get the swirly fire effect. Drop down particle, switch it to faded sphere. And these set it, there's so many settings in here and you can change them however you want. So don't, don't think that this is the only way to do it. Uh, burst size, we'll bump that down a bit. Death size, we'll bump that down a bit as well. And we'll change the color to maybe a dark blue at birth and a light blue at death. All right, so you can see how that's changing over here. Now I want to go to producer, radius X, Y, and Z. So I want to expand these. And you can see how they're expanding over uh, in our actual composition. And the, the Z radius to me is the coolest because you can see it start to move in three-dimensional space. So right now it's in front of camera moves and behind camera moves. Once we turn our camera back on, you'll, you'll really see kind of the power of uh, CC particle world. Let's bump up the birth rate. And make the longevity a little higher. Okay, so good enough for now. I'll go ahead and turn the camera back on. Go all the way back to the start of our composition. And click off everything else. So now... You can see here our particles are starting and our camera is moving around in three-dimensional space and the particles are in three-dimensional space as well. So when you get CC Particle World going, it's already in 3D, which means you can play around with the camera and play around with the particles and even add text to some place in the particles and you know make all these big camera movements and uh, really get your title sequence going. One thing to mention is that Black Solid 1, which I'll rename to Particles, actually is this one, Real Particles. Real Particles does not have a 3D box checked. So why is that? Well, we're using a simulation already on top of our solid. So our solid has become these particles and it's already moving around in three dimensional space. If we change it to 3D, it'll say, hey, effects that use cameras or light should be applied to 2D layers. And so it, it warns us and says, hey, you, you don't want to do this. Uh, so you can say, okay. And now that we have made it three dimensional, Look at that, it, it looks crappy. Now it's it's flat, and you, you can even see the layer uh, that the particles are on is three-dimensional now, and it, it just doesn't look good at all. So everything is back to flat, two-dimensional, and we just have a camera move. So I will turn that off, and now our particles are moving in three-dimensional space, and everyone is happy. So that's a more in-depth look at the camera moves. I hope that was helpful, and uh, you even got a little taste of CC Particle World. That'll do it for this time, but if you have suggestions for other tutorials, feel free to put them in the comments below, or hit me up directly on my website, and I'll try and get some more tutorials out as soon as possible. Until next time, I'm John Hartley. Thanks for watching.